Hi, this is Peyton with Girls Gone Right. Today we have Abby Fernandini with us here, and I have been following her for a long time. Um, she just has so much information, and she uses her platform to advocate for holistic healing. So I am so excited to have here, her here with us. Abby, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, hi, guys. I'm super excited <laughs> to be on. Thank you so much, Peyton letting me come and we're going to talk all things birth control and female yes. cycles. Um, yeah, my background is, um, well, a little bit of everything. I used to work for a big company called Clean Juice. I did some like brand development with them and did a lot of marketing like on the ground and helped them launch different stores like across the country and ended up having some like health issues of my own, which I ended up healing while I had moved out to California for work. And really when I was in California, I had kind of this like epiphany of, you know, what holistic really meant. And I was living in Santa Cruz, California at the time, which is, you know, a little bit south of San Francisco for anyone who's familiar with that area. And it's just a really small surf community beach town. Um, that's kind of the best way to describe it. And there I learned so much about holistic health because there was this, this whole group of people that were just on another level. Cause I thought I was healthy. Right. But then you just like, I don't know, you just meet people and they just kind of each person that you meet kind of takes you to a new level or you learn a new facet about like what holistic healing is. And so, um, yeah, that was, that was kind of where my journey started. And now I work for Dr. Josh Axe, who is, um, you know, a pretty, a pretty big, uh, physician in, in this like alternative health space. And, um, he founded the, the brand, uh, ancient nutrition, and we have a new startup company that we're launching. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I do. It's fun. That is awesome. I'm like, I'm so excited to talk about birth control and cycles and everything. I feel like this, this topic is just like, there's so little information or so mis so much misinformation on this topic out there. And being a woman, like this is something that should empower you. It's not something that should scare you or just like that you don't want to talk about. It's not like an icky subject. It's not weird. Like you, this is your body and like being in tune with your body is so important. And to me, just like, being free of like big pharma medications, big gov, like that is the most freeing life that you can live is to be completely independent. So this is going to be exciting. We're going to, we're going to go. Yes. We're going to go into it. Um, so but go ahead and like, I know you have so much information on this. So if you just want to like jump into wherever you want to start, this is going to be so informative. So guys stay listening. <laughs> so first and foremost, like, I love to say this, like, your doctor's not in charge of your health. Your family's not in charge of your health. Your husband's not in charge of your health. Your your mom, none, no one is in charge of your health except for you. And you are your own advocate. And you also know your body better than any physician ever will. And you have signals that your body is constantly sending you because the body is so smart. It's so intuitive and it auto corrects. So when we intervene with different you know, pharmaceuticals or, you know, different, you know, devices like things like IUDs, there is going to be imbalance that is brought into the body. And, you know, it's just really what we're, what I'm trying to do. And I know like this is your, you know, what you're trying to do too, is we're just trying to make women aware of things that are actually played off as normal, but it's not normal at all. So I just, you know, I have such a heart for speaking on this topic because I had some really um, just like personal problems with birth control. I'm like, raise your hand if that's been you, because that's been me. And I was started on the birth control <laughs> for like a little bit of acne, right? When I was 17, I was having hormone fluxes, yep. dominant, like probably estrogen dominance, um, which is like what we're seeing in most women, you know, around those younger ages right now, we're seeing like this complete hormone imbalance. Um, and so I was put on the pill, had no issues for the first two years then got randomly switched to a new pill from my insurance, ended up down a complete spiral, right? Just having the craziest symptoms, felt like I was going insane. I was like, this just, I feel like I'm out of my body. There, this is, there's just something not right. Around the same time, I'm starting to have kind of like autoimmune symptoms, a lot of inflammation. And then I get sweat. So I, I go off, I, I kind of like do a detox and I'm like, wow, I feel so much better. Right. Not dating anyone of, you know, at the time. And so I'm like, okay, like I'm off the pill kind of have had irregular cycles for a lot of my life. 
but I'm starting to feel like kind of good. And, and I feel like I'm starting to get somewhere and, and kind of like healing a little bit. And then, you know, fast forward uh, another like year or two and I'm living in California, kind of on this like journey of holistic health. I meet my, my now husband and I'm like, oh, what do I do about birth control? What do, where do I go? Like, do I, I need to get back on birth control. I don't want to get pregnant. Right. And, and at the time, of course, I, I knew nothing about cycles and, and, you know, how to track your cycle. And, and so went back on, um, and instead of a hormone, uh, pill, I actually ended up going on the copper IUD and then had a whole host of new problems. I was dealing with, um, oh my gosh, I was getting yeast infections. I was having painful sex. I was, I mean, you name it, the symptoms were there. I was having bad periods. It was much heavier than normal. And I was like, something's not right. So fast forward, start doing research. I learned so much about birth control and, you know, its effects on the body, whether it's the pill or whether it's the copper IUD, every single one of these methods seem to have really like negative effects that are not talked about. And so, you know, fast forward to my, you know, my um, gynecologist kind of gaslighting me, telling me that I'm crazy, telling me, are you sure? Because, you know, if you are not family planning right now, this is a bad idea, right? Like, kind of had the whole nine yeah. up saying, no, I want this IUD out. I am done. That is the end. Like, forget it. And I never looked back. And now I'm here. I use cycle syncing. My, all of my friends do it as well. We've had zero issues in terms of obviously like unplanned pregnancies. We, I mean, none of us have run into this issue yet. And I just learned so much that yeah. it, it's not really necessarily about like it's it's I don't know we're just not told enough about our cycles and how to track them properly and yeah. yeah and it's so easy like you can we have so many apps like there's an app for everything you can literally get an app to track your period yeah you can it's amazing period and <laughs> not even ovulating as long as they claim like yes like sperm can live yeah. longer right like think you hear things like that but technically our ovulation window is actually very small and these apps and like different thermometer you know cervical thermometers under the tongue thermometers mm -hmm. that your basal metabolic temperature like they're very accurate when it comes to you know this whole concept of tracking ovulation so that's kind of yeah that's kind of 30,000 foot view i had my own bad <laughs> my own bad experiences and we had to, we had to do a lot of digging. So. Yeah. And I feel like that's like so common too, though. Like I was put on the pill when I was 17. They're like, listen, it'll make your skin clear up. And I'm like, who, what 17 year old doesn't want clear skin? Like, yeah, it sells it so quick. And I was like, yeah, sign me up for that. I want beautiful skin and got on it, was on it and, and up until last year. And I, I think it was like, I got, I was on it when I was 17. And then when I was like 20, around 20 years old, they told me that I have endometriosis and it was just like so painful. And then they were like, if you get off of this, it's going to be so much worse. Like it's, you're not going to be able to handle the pain. So they're like, get on birth control, skip your placebos. You'll skip your period. You won't have the pain anymore. And I was like, is that safe? Like skipping my period. I've never done that. Like that just doesn't sound right. And they're like, nope, no side effects. You'll be fine. And so I did that and I, it, it just didn't get any better. Like it did for a little bit and then it continued, then it got way worse. And then I was like, okay, this is not helping. And then I was just like, you know what? I just don't like with my beliefs, this is not like aligning with it anymore. I don't want to be on a medication that I just feel like I don't need got off of it. And my endometriosis, like, I'm not saying it's going to work for everyone, but for me, like, it's like, mostly like it's so manageable i feel like when i got off birth control i felt like myself like the emotions that i felt it felt so like new like i'm like wow i feel like really happy but like i feel it differently like i just feel like i was like in a fog i don't know what you call that but it was weird well it's insane what it does to cognitive dysfunction hormone first of all the fact that half of our population of women are on some sort of hormone by the age of 14 70 yeah. that is red flag like literally we talk about i mean like there's all sorts of things right like in terms of you know secosteroids and hormones and you know things that affect the body that we hear about right like you hear about steroid use and this and that like half of our population are using like a low dose of some sort of hormone yeah. like the females and you know the fact that it has been normalized and a lot of the side effects have been normalized is just like it is so there's so many red flags there and like what you said about 
coming off of it and then feeling like your endometriosis was so much more manageable. There is something to be said about that too that is not getting talked about. And I feel like I've heard so many anecdotal stories like yours at this point because they are not willing to put as much money into the research as... Yeah, never, because you know. that's what makes them less money. <laughs> exactly. But there's like some amazing doctors, like Dr. Jolene Brighton in particular. She is a phenomenal. She wrote a book called Beyond the Pill. So if you're listening to this and you have questions about birth control, by like please go buy this book, Beyond the Pill. It's going to break down really like every facet about birth control, about the female body, about your cycles. It's going to talk about how Olympic athletes are put on these birth control pills to keep their cycle from happening while they're training. Like all, all sorts of stuff that we don't even realize how like these pills are being used. But I mean, it's crazy. And um, her book is amazing. It's wildly informative and you're gonna like probably close the book and go whoa <laughs> did not know that's oh, so that's crazy not, that's just like a little plug there she's a wealth of knowledge um oh my gosh yeah. that is so like so what is the benefit of like not having your period like why you're like i mean i guess it's just like the stress of a woman's body that you don't have to deal with they say that like as you have your cycle right hormones fluctuate so there's going to be points in your cycle that you're more limber than other points in your cycle there's mm-hmm. in your cycle when you're more emotional than others and so their theory i guess like one of the theories is that when you have a girl that's on this constant dose of hormone to where her she's not having those natural cycles um mm-hmm. like you know going through the different cycle phases like it makes her a better athlete to some extent like that there's the, the, there's these radical like wild claims and so what's actually funny is is my best friend is um she's an olympic figure skater and she was the one who read, read this book and she was she competed for the u.s in like 2014 um and she was like it's so funny because i was reading this book and i was like half of the girls that i know were put on birth control by their trainers and it's just it's wild like she was like i didn't even put like pieces together and i like would have like as a young person like never really known um you know would have never really known like kind of why i really asked because you just think that it's normal and yeah that was they were doing that to the gymnasts to the figure skaters like crazy wow and i feel like it's like I don't know. Like, I know doctors will always claim, like, no doctor will tell you birth control is not safe. Because at least my doctors, they were like, no side effects, no long-term side effects. Write that <laughs> off. Like, they're like, no, it's it's completely safe. I was like, what and go back there. <laughs> it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel that. It doesn't, like, being on birth control for your whole entire appeal that is hormones, it doesn't feel safe. How, how can they just be like, oh, safe. But then when you get your pill, you pick it up from the pharmacy. There's like a book of possible side effects, but the doctor won't ever tell you what those, what that might say. Yeah. Well, and you know, what's crazy is to like back it up too and look at what's going on really with females prior to being put on the pill. There's actually a lot, like there's some crazy like indicators that there's already hormone imbalances going on in young girls' bodies. If we're seeing these like, I know to a certain extent, like puberty is of course a thing. Um, but to have the symptoms that a lot of these young women are having to the extent that they're having with these hormone like fluctuations, it's actually like not that normal, like to the, to the degree that a lot of women are having it. And so we honestly point to, you know, there's an estrogen dominance happening in a lot of young women that poses a lot of red flags to me. They're having like wildly horrible acne and they're having these, these just like radical mood swings. And like, like as young children, you know, as young girls going into adulthood, that's not actually normal. Um, and so that there's a lot of indicators there of, you know, there's a lot of estrogenics in our food in our water, mm-hmm. microplastics, things that are really affecting the hormone cycle and development too, which is, you know, also, you know, scary, right? Like, yeah, because it's just being covered up with a pill. And yeah, yeah, it's so crazy. And I mean, if you look at like the, like a diet of like, let's say a 10 year old compared to a 10 year old, maybe 30 years ago, like 10 year olds eat McDonald's, like which they're meat injected okay. with hormones and, and like terrible things. So that's what they're eating all the time is these foods, the, the chemicals, the hormones. And then 
there we wonder why 13 year olds look different they're like oh look at this 13 year old on tiktok i didn't look like that when i was 13 i'm like because i was the best i mean like up until i was 17 i was like oh man like am i gonna have the drop am i gonna hit puberty i was waiting for boobs when i was like 17 was like am i ever gonna get them i didn't really get them yeah I mean, and that's the crazy part is also when you look at other like countries and and you look at, you know, just other developing countries, other developed countries, like, I mean, we're seeing a lot, there's a lot of trends um, that are happening. Uh, I think like of Peru for an example, because like my husband is, is um, from Peru. And so we spent some time this last year, we lived there for a couple months and like, so women in the city, like you can kind of tell that they've obviously adopted or developed like in Lima in particular, like they've de- developed a, you know, first world country lifestyle, right? It, it, you know, probably fast food, you know, a lot of seed oils, you know, canola, you know, things that are maybe a little bit more inflammatory, things that, you know, can cause hormone imbalances just like within the food. But in general, in Peru, people eat wonderfully healthy GMOs are actually banned from the country. Like Monsanto is banned because it's such a biodiverse land. It it is a, it is a gem of the world. Like that is what Peru is. That's incredible. Yeah, exactly. And so they grow up most of the people in these countries, right? Yes. They're dealing with, you know, outside the cities, they're dealing with some pollution problems because Lima is very, you know, it is a very polluted city, but in general, like, I don't think that they are seeing the same, problems in their young girls as you know we're seeing here and and again maybe that's a stretch and I don't know the statistics on it and very anecdotal based on like just kind of what I was seeing but they're just eating so much healthier in general they have so much access to amazing high quality foods and produce and it it is a land of the plant like plentiful so you know I have to what you have to wonder you gotta wonder our standards I just feel like in it this is the US. Other countries like the FDA is not protecting you. They're looking for money. The things that we are approving to put in our food is so low. Like if you look at things like um like you can look at the McDonald's menu, what's in our ingredients in America, and then look at the ingredients in France, like what they sell at McDonald's, completely different ingredients. And that's because this the countries have a different standard of, of what they put in their food. And America's like first world country, but we're not eating like a first world country. No way. It's and crazy. The alternative agendas at hand. And I mean, there's like, you know, there, I mean, there's a lot of things that point to trying to minimize a pop. Like we are seeing rates of infertility that like ha- have never been seen before. I mean, it is absolutely insane. The amount of women that are having, um, you know, that, the, that are having infertility issues, having to go in for yeah. in vitro is a, money maker it is a huge industry now like with the just what they're doing and honestly like unfortunately the rates at which women are losing children preterm is honestly sad as well and so you look at these statistics and you're like what is going on and not only that but the men and their sperm counts are wildly low as well. And so, and it's just kind of developing year over year. And people started really taking note in the, like in the 2000s, they were like, whoa, wait yep. a second, what's going on? Why is this happening? And it's only getting worse. Like it, it really is, it's only getting worse. Um, wow. There's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> we can do that on the <laughs> show. <laughs> but, um, you know, and then, and then looking at birth control, right? There is a chance that you become infertile after birth control. And that is not what your doctor is going to tell you. They're not going to look you in the eyes yeah. and they're not going to say, hey, you know, the fact that you could develop PCOS or conditions while being on the birth control pill is going to make it almost impossible for you to become pregnant later on in life if you're looking yeah. to family plan later. And that's wow. also scary because there, I mean, it's just, you know, we're living in this like kind of blissful ignorance where nobody's talking about it. And now we're living, you know, and you come, you come off of the birth control pill and you have all of these post birth control symptoms and it's called post birth control syndrome, right? (laughs) Where you get wildly out of whack because your body has gotten accustomed to this particular hormone on a routine schedule every day. Your liver is so overtaxed at this point because it doesn't even know which way is up and it's been trying to process pharmaceuticals and balance hormones and detox everything else in your body. And so now you're dealing with, you know, hypothyroidism, 
you know, all sorts of liver problems and maybe you gained weight or whatever the case may be. I mean, it is, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. So how do you like manage getting off birth control? Cause like, I know when I was getting off birth control, I asked my doctor, I was like, Hey, I'm getting off the pill. What do you recommend? And she was like, I'm not recommending anything because I don't support that. And I was like, Oh, well, I guess I'll figure it out myself. <laughs> I mean, like, I just feel like there's, there's so little room for advocates out there to just be like, Hey, you can get off birth. Because I, my fear was that like my doctor's like, your skin's going to break out. Like you have, you've been on the pill for this long. It's going to be like your, your moods are going to be mood swings. And like your skin's going to break out. Like it's just going to, and you're going to get pregnant immediately. Like that was like the one thing that my doctor told me. She's like, fear mongering. They love to fear. I mean, I keep hearing this over and over again. I had a friend, she texted me and she goes, yeah. So I just got off of the pill and she goes, is it normal to feel like myself again? She could, she she literally texts me and she goes, I like my anxiety is completely gone. I feel like a different person. I feel like I'm living in my body again. She's like, I, she kind of said what you said, like where there was like a fog and she kind of felt like out of reality. She's like, I literally got off and she's like, how many days does it take to feel a difference? Cause I already feel different and it's only been two days. And I was like, that's actually like what I'm hearing a lot of people saying. That's like the same sentiments that are being like echoed over and over again from so many women and nobody's, I mean, nobody's talking about it. So you know, to answer your question, if I'm, you know, a girl just now coming off of birth control, because I've done it twice now, I did it with the pill once and then with the copper IUD and with the pill in particular, there's a couple of things to note, right? A lot of women are going to see, you know, things like estrogen and progesterone imbalances after coming off of the birth control pill. Like that is just, (laughs) that is honestly like you should prepare for it, right? And that's Mm -hmm. really just because your liver is used to doing a particular job. It's used to seeing a certain pharmaceutical uh, come through to help balance your hormones. And your liver is responsible for a lot. It is responsible for, you know, breaking down fats and proteins. It's responsible for getting pharmaceuticals out of the system, right? Like, you know, kind of in cahoots with like the lymphatic system. And of course our kidneys play a role, but the liver is responsible for, you know, excreting, you know, a lot of pharmaceuticals, um, bad foods, right. That have bad ingredients, you know, or seed oil, you know, all that stuff like seed oils that become oxidated in the body. And now our liver has to take care of those things, microplastics, any other, you know, medication you may be on, alcohol. I mean, you name it. The liver is responsible for like something like crazy over 200 jobs. So in Western society, it is so common for our liver to just be wildly overtaxed. Also, not to mention pesticides and things that are in our food, in our water, metals, heavy metals. The the liver is responsible for all of that. And then you throw in the fact that now you're coming off of a hormone that you have relied on for X amount of years and your liver is going to be like, your, first of all, your body and your hormone cycle is going to be like, whoa, what's happening? And then two, your liver is going to be like, also, hey, yo, what's happening? So my recommendation is, hey, like, once you come off of the birth control pill, honestly, like, I, I like to say, like, you know, try to get through, like, if you have a period or you get a period on your pill, like, try to go through that, like, menstrual cycle. And while you're kind of, like, going through that or maybe after you're going through that, you want to start thinking about ways that you can support your liver. Because your liver is going to undergo many changes. And so however you can best support liver detoxification after the pill is going to help you mitigate your symptoms. Now, that can be a couple of things, right? Like in traditional Chinese medicine, we like to say that like supports like. So if you support your liver by eating something like a beef liver supplement or actually beef liver, which has a potent taste, so I would recommend, you know, supplementing something like that or supporting with things like, you know, herbs like milk thistle, which really help to stimulate the liver so that it can produce bile so that it can kind of have this, you know, this turnover, this detoxing effect. Supporting your liver in those ways and trying to your best to do the whole foods diet and supporting with root vegetables and, you know, clean proteins, that'll do wonders for your liver just to start. Now, the other component that you're looking at too, again, is a lot of women are dealing with high estrogen. Okay. That's very common. We're talking fibroids in the breasts, their breasts swell up two sizes right before their periods. They get period poops, right? Like where you're like, you're not able to poop 
before your period or it's the opposite, right? It's like one or the other. So you're having these really chronic imbalances that's all related to the liver and its detoxification of estrogen. So you could be looking at estrogen dominance, progesterone, like that has kind of taken a, a back seat. And, and that's actually not good because it causes more stress on the body, more inflammation when we're not able to detox estrogen properly. And so really like one of my tips that's super easy and actionable is, hey, eat a carrot a day, a raw carrot a day, because it will take, it, it detoxes quite a bit of estrogen out of the body. Um, and in like normal balanced people, it actually might take too much estrogen out, but with women who are having these symptoms, right. Or these serious hormone imbalances, a raw carrot a day, or like a raw carrot salad, like with apple cider vinegar, like a dressing, something as simple as that, it can work wonders for your estrogen and your liver. Um, so that's an actionable tip, like to think about just as, you know, a one-off on how to support, you know, that detoxification process. Um, and the other thing is sauna, sweat in the sauna, go to hot yoga, because when your liver is taxed, everything's going to come through the skin because the skin is like literally what, how your body will detox is a backup option always. So if your liver is taxed, you're having acne and all these other things, right? Your skin is the thing that's showing it's, you know, there is an imbalance and it's likely in the liver and the skin is directly tied to the liver. So get in the sauna as much as you can start activating those sweat glands because that's how your body is really going to, you know, be able to do the work and keep up. So. Wow. That is so cool. Like interesting facts, carrots and sweat it out, go to a sauna, easy oh, things that you can do. Even high intense, you know, high intensity interval training. My, my other recommendation too, is like some women like aren't necessarily able to, you know, go for those high intense, you know, high intensity trainings. I was actually, actually talking about it today is Sometimes it's like more inflammation in the body and more cortisol release in the body. When you're trying to balance your hormones and you're estrogen dominant, the last thing you honestly want to do is activate a cortisol response because it actually th suppresses the thyroid more and it creates that like estrogen dominance. So, you know, things that nourish your body and heal you and allow you to sweat, but in a more, you know, balanced way as opposed to just really stressing your body out, causing more inflammation. Some For some women, that's a better approach. Um, and I always like to caveat that when you're kind of going through this process of detoxing and, and kind of learning more about your body, right? Yeah, that is so cool. So what does like a diet look like? Like, let's say I'm getting off birth control. Like what you, you talked about anti-inflammatory, is that something that can be tied into your diet? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so you know, I like to say that I follow a very pro-metabolic lifestyle, right? So just to start as kind of like the ground, the laying the groundwork here is your body, you can tell so much about your body based on your temperature. So wow. your temperature is what control, like your basal, we call it your basal metabolic temperature, what you're doing just like at your resting position, maybe first thing when you wake up in the morning, you know, your, your temperature fluctuates at different points in the day based on your food, based on your activity levels, based on if you're getting ready to go to sleep at night during sleep, your temperature tells us everything you need to know. Now, for example, when you wake up first thing in the morning and you have a super low temperature, maybe it's hovering around 97, maybe lower 96. We're looking at some metabolic issues there and that can be hormone related, right? Like it can be from the pill. A lot of women are experiencing this where they have a lower than normal temperature. And that tells me everything. I, I mean, it tells me a lot. I should say it tells me a lot about what I need to know about what's happening with the thyroid. So the thyroid is also very much so tied in with these estrogen imbalances and this liver, these liver problems that we see, right? The thyroid is like, obviously it controls your metabolism. So it controls your weight gain, your weight loss, your weight maintenance. It controls your temperature. It also has a lot to do with your circadian rhythm and your hormones. So when we see low temperature, that tells me that there's a chance your thyroid is suppressed. So you're not in a pro-metabolic state. Foods play a huge role in changing the temperature of your body, as does exercise. So when I say we want to eat pro-metabolically, when we're coming off of something like the birth control pill, we want to support raising that temperature during the day 
because when you have a higher temperature as you're going through the day, that means that you're working in a pro-metabolic state. And one thing I like to say that girls love to do is drink coffee on an empty stomach first thing in the morning. They get the cold hands, the cold feet. Now they're freezing. They've activated cortisol. They're likely not supporting a pro-metabolic state. In fact, they're probably making estrogen dominance because they've activated the stress and stress and estrogen, that cortisol and that estrogen, they go hand in hand. So my one caveat for women who are like getting off the birth control pill, they're going through this process. The last thing I want you to do is go drink coffee on an empty stomach first thing in the morning and activate that cortisol response. And now you're freezing for the rest of the day. Your temperature has dropped. And now we're in this like state of problems, right? Um, so that's like just to start, right, with metabolic. Now, pro-metabolic eating is, and people are going to like, people are going to fight me on this, but <laughs> lots of animal fats. We love, we love eating, you know, different types of animal meats, not just, um, not necessarily just like muscle meat. But, you know, supporting it with liver and heart and other things. And now if that's, like, too much for the average person, because it is, it's not super common here in America, right? Supplements. Supplements with things like beef liver, like beef tongue. Um, getting your hands on things like, I know it's going to sound crazy, like raw milk. Um, and I could go into a whole thing on why that's good. <laughs> eating root vegetables, eating, you know, high-quality sourced meat, eggs, um, I am an advocate of raw dairy because it's not pa pasteurized and there is a lot of benefits to pro-metabolic. Uh, there's a lot of pro-metabolic benefits to that. And, and that's just the place to start, honestly. Like I could kind of go on all day um, and I can always walk you So through. is raw milk, is that, a, so like I'm a Schitt's Creek fan and on Schitt's Creek, raw <laughs> milk is illegal. <laughs> the funniest show ever. I love it. And I remember the one like where they go to get raw milk because they can sell it and it's like illegal. Is that, is it like illegal in America? <laughs> this is a great question. I actually have a whole book on raw milk because, okay, this is a tangent, right? Okay. We're going to tangent. We're going to tangent just for five seconds. Cause go for it. So raw milk. So pasteurization is a very like lucrative business. First of all, first and foremost, like pasteurization is a lucrative business for a couple of reasons. One, because it obviously it extends the shelf life of things significantly, but also, it just, I mean, there, I could go into that, but pasteurization is a super lucrative business. It extends the shelf life on a lot of things. Now, what we've seen is obviously this mass movement in the last probably a hundred years of pasteurizing dairy products. Now, if you go in other places in the world, Peru, any like most places in Europe, like probably so I, they do not pasteurize their milk, guys. I've got a secret. They all drink. Wow. Milk. Okay. America is the only country in the world that has severely high cases of lactose intolerance. And I could again. So wow. dots, right? I'm Pasteur lactose intolerant. <laughs> I'm interested. I'm so okay, well, here we go. Like, let's connect the dots. Now people are going to say I'm crazy. And oh my gosh, it's a health hazard. Is it like, let's, let's think every other country in the world is doing this except for the U S and I will say like, there are places in Asia that they are genuinely like, there is like genetic predispositions towards like being lactose intolerant. So Asia is probably like the caveat, but other places in the world <laughs> are all drinking raw dairy. Okay. None of these places in the world have lactose intolerant issues or even gluten issues for that matter. Any other country in the world you go to, there's none of these problems, okay? You come to the U.S., half of the population is literally lactose intolerant. and they They've have made a market out of it. Like <laughs> oat milk, almond milk, grain-free bread, gluten-free this. Like, it's crazy. So down the rabbit holes. And and you got to ask yourself, why is that? Why, why do we have... Okay, well, let's look at what we're doing different than other countries. Okay, great. We're pasteurizing our milk. What does that do? Okay, that does a couple of things. It actually can kill, like, the lactase enzyme that is meant to like digest lactose. So there is properties like, and again, I'm, I'm not honestly probably not the best at explaining this because even I don't understand it. And there's much better experts that can explain it, you know, better than I am. But from what I understand, there are properties that during the pasteurization process that kill certain, you know, enzymes in milk that would naturally allow you to break down milk much easier. And so we talk about this like lactose problem 
well, the properties that would technically balance lactose and allow us as humans to break it down easier, it's not in milk. It's not, it's pasteurized. It's, it's been killed off basically. So that's just like a little food for thought on, on raw wow. milk. And the joke is that it's illegal in the U S where I actually, I don't even really know where and why it is because of its, you know, prevalence in other places. But, you know, there's a lot of things that I don't understand about, you know, the FDA and <laughs> that is so I need to get my hands on raw milk. I'm going to find it. If anyone's listening that knows where to get my hands on, they'll sell it to you for your dog or your cat. And then oh. you're like, hey, I'm going to drink it. <laughs> it's, it's for my, it's for my dog. And I have a lot. Going for my dog or my cat. Like my, literally my raw milk in the fridge was like labeled like for animal consumption only. So you can like, you can go to my, your you know what I'm saying? Like you go to my dog can have it, but I can't like, wow. The, the kicker is, is like, I give my like dog this, like we had some like pasteurized milk. It was like organic pasteurized milk in and dogs and cats should be able to like drink milk just fine. Right. Yeah. I gave my dog, she had a liquid diarrhea. It was like, okay, <sighs> it's not just an, a human thing. This is probably an animal thing too. Like oh my God. Really raw dairy too. Right. So you did your own experience, their experiment. It's tested. Yeah. There you go. I know it's anecdotal, but like, don't quote me, but this is what I've seen. <laughs> that is so crazy. So like, so interesting just cause like, I feel like everything, like I, I'm a believer that like a lot of things can be healed from your diet. Like having a holistic lifestyle can heal so much. Like, I mean, even like coming, like, like looking at diseases and long-term diseases, like sicknesses, illnesses, and also mental health. Like, I feel like it's like inside and out kind of thing. Like it's all in one sad too is i mean obviously we have a huge mental health crisis going on in the u.s and um there's i don't want to like poke i i i don't want to poke the bear i i say that right in in the you know i've had family member i've had people that are so close to me with um some you know mental health problems that you know we have been able to correct with nutritional like balancing and basic circadian rhythm balancing because a lot, and I'm not saying all, because this is not all cases, right? There are lots of different predispositions, but yeah. a lot of the mental health crises that we're having in the U.S., we look at like five basic things. And this is modern physicians. They look at how much sunlight are you getting in the morning, during the day, and at night? Are, are your eyes synced with the sun? What does your nutrition look like? What's in your water? What is your sleep? And of course, how are your relationships? That's the five things. Those are the five things you can, you can narrow so much down with just looking at the basics. Because if one of those things is off, it can cause you a whole host of issues. And if multiple of those things are off, then we can just follow the trail. Right. And, and, and that is, you know, that is the sad reality is like most people don't have great water here. We don't have the best food here. We're living in a constant state of stress. Our relationships are so much further because we all live through the phones now. I mean, it's, I mean, it's not, and now, and half the women are on birth control. <laughs> and so we wonder, because so, we have hormone imbalances, right? So, yeah. Wow. That is like so interesting. And like, I mean, if all these women are on birth control and like, the thing is there are so many other alternatives. Like you don't have to be, everyone thinks that like, it's the end all be all like be on the pill or you're going to get pregnant. You can, there's so many other things that you can do to, you can not have sex. That's the first one. <laughs> Easy. Not going to get pregnant that way. Second one, if you want to have sex, go for it. But there's ways to, if, if there's family planning, there's like a whole thing on family planning. Like that is a real thing. Like you can, have have an app on your phone and go go ahead and dive into it because you know way more about this than me like just like a couple of things right so one natural cycles is a great way to track your cycle okay natural cycles is the app that's the one i use it also has the option of the, you can do a monthly plan with a thermometer okay so you can do two things with natural cycles the app which is amazing one, you can track your cycle, you can track your ovulation, you can track when your period's coming. It is wildly, wildly accurate. Um, if you are having hormone imbalances and maybe your cycle's irregular, it's also great to track because it can kind of pick up on if your cycle's shorter than the average, if it's fluctuate, like it really is remarkable what it can do. 
The other thing is if you're tracking your temperature first thing every morning, like you can with this app and you can record your temperature, you're also going to learn if you're metabolically like healthy. If you're having super low temperatures consistently and you're recording it in your app, you are likely having some potential thyroid problems or like, you know, there, there's all sorts of stuff that can be happening. Maybe you have cortisol imbalances. So really like that app is amazing because it can do two things for you. It can tell you if your lifestyle is suitable for you and if there's some changes you need to make. And two, it can tell you when you're about to, you know, be able to have a baby, <laughs> you know, you can track your ovulation. So um, that's why I really advocate for, for that, the, the cycle tracking. Um, and I've been doing it for over a year and a half now. And like, let me tell you, I haven't had any issues. My friend has been on it for three years. No issues. My other like few friends have all been on it. No issues. So, I mean, that's just, I mean, that's been our experience. And, you know, it, if you use it to the fullest extent, like I say, it's 99% effective, just like the pill is. Like yeah. wow. if you're using it like you were to use the pill for full accuracy. It, there's, it's kind of, I mean... I don't know. That's, that's awesome. And I think there's something to be said about like being completely like natural, like being in tune with your body, knowing like when you wake up, you feel a little different and you know, your period's about to start. Like that's empowering. Like to know that you're so in tune with your body and like, you can just sit, it's like, spider-man senses like one thing is off like i will wake up in the morning like when i'm about to start my period and i know like i just know it's coming yeah and yeah then, and it's just like you know <laughs> and the other thing too that i think is really um a challenge that i also want to encourage women to be a little bit more um on the on the alert for is that it is not normal to have wild pms wildly crazy bloating like to the point where you're in bed, really, really heavy bleeding, like really bad PMS mood swing, you know, stool problems. That stuff is not normal. That indicates that you do in fact have hormone imbalances. So if you're having those symptoms, you need to be writing it down or recording it in these apps and try to find some things that can help, which is detoxing estrogen, using supplements that support the liver, milk thistle, you know, um, magnesium every single night before bed, finding those tangible little things, even just making whole food lifestyle changes, finding those little tweaks that you can make to start mitigating those PMS symptoms. That's really important. Yeah. Wow. This is like so cool. I feel like there's so much information in here, guys. Like, we, you guys are going to be so empowered. I hope this encourages you guys to, if you're on the pill, at least be more aware and look into it. And if you feel that this is right for you, take those steps to do it because it is so empowering to just be in tune with your body, to be completely whole because there is something missing when you're on the pill. You are not uh, your natural self. Like there are effects and that you may or may not know about that your, your doctor is not going to tell you because that's money out of their pocket. And you have to advocate for yourself. You have to do this, do your own research, but it is just so empowering to be independently healthy. Like that is the most freeing thing ever. And that's what we like. We like freedom. Like yes. we are all here, love yes. freedom yes. and we to love have freedom. It. Yeah. To have freedom of your body. Like that is the best thing ever. You want freedom for your country, but like, don't you want freedom for your body too? to like yes. be able to like, if the world shut down, you're not going to be able to go to Walgreens to pick up your birth control. Like, I mean, what are you going to do then? Right. There is this like sense of like self-reliance. Like you really, you really need to be self-reliant and, and you really need to be able to pick up those signals on your body. So I encourage every single woman, a couple of good resources. I recommend books. Um, I recommend how to heal your metabolism by Kate Deering. That's a great one. Um, because a lot of us are dealing with metabolic problems. Um, the other one is, again, like I mentioned, beyond the pill. If you're looking at reasons why you should stop, like with the pill, take take a look at some of those books, right? Um, yeah, that's, I mean, be your own advocate. Do your own research. Awesome. But well, this has been amazing, Abby. You are just like a wealth of knowledge. This is incredible. Like, thank you for using your platform to advocate for these kinds of things. It's like, I will watch your stories. I'm like, huh. Good. Like, I'm going to do more research on this, but this is so <laughs> I know. I, like, I think I throw people off, though, because they're like, wait a second, hold up. I'm not supposed to be supplementing with vitamin D or like, you know, something like that. Yeah. Like, oh, they're 
just, I don't know about this girl. <laughs> it's so cool though. Like the more, you know, and like using your platform to advocate for something that just feels like so small and like, it's not talked about enough. It's so important because it's making a difference. You're educating people and that's what we're here to do. So thank you so much for coming on here and sharing your knowledge. This is incredible. I hope that you guys all are taking away something here because I know I've learned so much. Now I'm going to go get my hands on raw milk. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Tolerance, small doses, super small doses start out really, really small. And then just like, kind of like see how you feel. It's like my best. If you've been like, you know, had that problem for a little while, jumping right in might still kind of cause issues so that's yeah. the one off the caveat well, <laughs> i'm ex- i'm excited like i've i've been at, like i'm like oh i'm lactose intolerant i'm only drinking almond milk now so i'm excited to like find where i can get raw milk at so if any of you guys know just let me know <laughs> raw milk dealer i'm looking for one <laughs> oh my gosh well this has been amazing thank you guys so much and i'll see you guys in two weeks bye